My name is Mara from the YouTube channel Books Like Whoa, and I am here today to talk about some of my all-time favorite romance novel covers. Now, there's a lot of strong feelings about what makes a good or bad cover design in romance. I know people like get in their feelings about this. So I'm going to talk about what I personally enjoy, but I just want to acknowledge I know particularly my enjoyment of the more sort of like cartoon or like drawing based designs is somewhat controversial, but we're going to talk about both ends of the spectrum. Some of the more kind of traditional covers that are kind of a clench where a guy and a gal are like in a heated embrace together on the cover. They're often in like a big beautiful dress. The girl that is not usually the guy, you know, that's kind of the more traditional end. We also have like object based covers, which I think can be really nice. And actually, I don't think I have any in physical form. So I'll just flash up a few of the sort of object based covers that I like here. These are ones that instead of going for the characters, they pick some sort of, uh, you know, inanimate object and photograph it sexily, however one can do that to communicate usually more of like kind of an erotic type book. So I do enjoy that as cover design, but I don't have any of those in physical form to show you. So there's kind of those three schools of romance novel cover design. So let's start with some of the ones that are kind of more clenchy or have people on the covers, and then we'll move into some of the more drawing based ones. Um, I should mention, like I said, I do enjoy sort of a big, beautiful ball gown kind of cover. So I'll put some of those here. A lot of these I have on my Kindle rather than in physical form. But I do really like this school of romance novel cover design because it's sort of just like beautiful dress porn and you get to look at these like big silken whatever. Uh, I think that it's just it communicates sort of the tone of these often historical novels really effectively. And I'm always going to be down for just like sort of a big beautiful dress on the cover. I also enjoy some retro covers. So the example I have here is this first romance novel I ever read, which was The Marriage Deal by Sarah Craven. But these old Harlequin presents are like category covers. I actually really enjoy now for their sort of retroness. You can see it has its original price tag. It was Hills Everyday Low Price, $1.80 back in the day. Uh, but I mean, it has like this really kind of fun over the top font. We've got the awesome 80s hairdos on this. But yeah, anytime I see some of these sort of old school covers, I do enjoy them. I just think that at this point, they're retro and fun. But in terms of um, some of the person based cover designs that I think effectively communicate their tone, and I should mention at this point, part of what I mean, a, a cover has two jobs in my view. One, it needs to entice you to pick it up. That's the whole reason why they put time and effort into the cover design is basically as marketing and to kind of like entice you into the story. But also I think a good cover correctly communicates the tone of the book. So I think if there's a little bit of a bait and switch in terms of some of what's being implied by the cover isn't actually what the book is like, I think that that basically is bad marketing because yeah, you might get someone to buy it, but they're probably not going to like it because it's not the book that they thought they were getting. So these are ones that I both like the cover design and I think they like effectively communicate the tones of the book. So one is I love Alyssa Cole's Reluctant Royals and this is the Runaway Royals spinoff series. Um, I think that this is a great example of contemporary romance novels with people on the cover where you have kind of a clinch. It's not over the top, which is something I don't often enjoy. Um, but the dresses in these contemporaries, like look how beautiful this is. I just feel like this, I, I just think this is such a striking and beautiful cover of its kind. And you know, these are set with African royalty. So I think that you know, kind of the vibe is correctly communicated here. And just overall, I love what they did on the cover designs for pretty much all of these in this series. And then another uh, series that I really enjoy the cover design on, especially the recent ones, is the Highlander series from Lindsay Sands. It always cracks me up how gigantic this man is compared to my head because I got the hardcover version because I really, really liked this particular one, Highland Treasure. It came out recently. But um, what I like about these is that these are Scottish historicals that are very fun. They have a light comedic tone to them. And having these sort of over the top, very gratuitously drawn glisten on the peck, 
I just think that the artist gets the vibe of these books really well. Like, I just feel like this communicates tone of these particular books well. And they just, especially the last few of these, just the care, they're always wet, they're glistening and brooding. And I'm just like, whoever is drawing these covers, they get it. <laughs> like, they are, they get what these books are about. So I think that these are a really nice version of what they are. And I do think that this effectively communicates kind of the vibe of these books. And then moving into some of the drawing based ones, I want to say one of the things, well, maybe first let's start with just two that I think are just really cool and beautiful, even beyond one of the things that I really like about drawing based covers. So first of all, you had me at Ola by Alexis Daria from last year. This is about, um, so it's about two telenovela stars fake dating and falling in love. So I think that kind of the vibe of this communicates some of that kind of, uh, like just the exaggeration of some of the cartoon drawings of these, maybe kind of communicate some of those sort of melodrama of a telenovela. But I also just think that this is one of the most beautiful drawings on any book I've ever seen. I think that this is just so beautifully done and this also falls into what I'm going to talk about for my last two picks so I'll, I'll circle back to that but I just think that this is beautiful it does communicate the tone effectively because it's a lighter more fun book uh, but also some of the kind of melodrama of the of the telenovela they're on and then I just love these bromance book club covers they are I just think that they're super cute and I also love seeing people on Instagram recreating these covers like I've seen several Instagrams of like a ginger bearded dude with a cat and then this book instead of this one recreating the cover and I just I'm a sucker for a kitty cat <laughs> any kind of animal on the cover makes me happy and uh, I just think that this is a super super cute cover I really love the treatment that all of these have gotten and then the other thing I like about drawing covers as I was starting to talk about with this is that often especially if the main characters are in some kind of marginalized community in terms of their race or their body type or their ableness often there are not cover a lot of like stock cover imagery for that so really a lot of this drawing based trend comes out of indie romances that often have a lot of that kind of representation in them and they you know those indie romance authors don't necessarily have access to like you know create their own photo shoots so this trend I think in a lar large measure can be traced back to um, wanting characters that actually look like the people in the books on the covers so for in this example these characters are are Puerto Rican if I'm remembering correctly so we actually get to see two Puerto Rican characters represented on the cover and then I also think especially for plus size rep cartoon or drawing based covers can be great so I absolutely love the cover of spoiler alert one thing that I love about this is that our plus size character in this is drawn with kind of like an apple shape so a lot of times you can you can find plus size uh, cover art or like uh, stock images but they all are a very specific body type within plus size rep and I love that she's apple shaped and this is just such a cute like it's a cartoon clench but I think that they look adorable together and they're dressed a la a specific scene in this book and I just think that this is adorable so I love that and then uh, take a hint Danny Brown <laughs> I love this cover I love the bright yellow with the blue I think just the color story is really nice and yeah you have a, a curvy heroine who is black with a kind of a mountain of a man ex-rugby player who is of Middle Eastern descent. So again, we have the correct rep. And then again, I just love the overall color story on this. So that's my defense. I know not everybody likes the drawn covers, but I do personally enjoy them. And those are ones that I think highlight some of the best in that area. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to shout out a few indie romances because they don't necessarily have the same budget or resources to create covers. So I think it's great when they are able to put together ones that I personally enjoy. Um, first, Alyssa Colligan. This is her Let Us Dream novella. Uh, and I just think this um, is a historical uh, in the, I think it's 1919 in Harlem. I think this just communicates the vibe of this particular historical really, really well. And also the beautiful fur. It's just pretty, I think. I also love this one from, from Katie Wilde because I think this effectively communicates sort of like the campy, fun, fantasy romance tone of this. And that is the Midwinter Mail Order Bride. I remember being so struck by this cover. Like this is what drew me in to read this because I just thought like, you've got this gigantic barbarian hero and then this, it, like it's snowing, but she's just wrapped in this little fur all sexily. Like, I just think that this has sort of a fun tone to it. It is a fun book, so. 
Um, I think that this is a great example of cover design. And actually, I think Katie Wilde de designs her own covers, if I'm remembering rightly. So good on her. And then I know Courtney Milan designs her own covers. And this is a great example of the big beautiful dress trend in an indie. All of her Brother Sinister books have like a lady just in a gorgeous, this one's a purple dress. And I just like that. She has her distinct font treatments she always uses, so that's consistent. Anyway, I just, I'm into it. Those are some of my favorite romance covers of recent years. Uh, like I said, I know we all have things that we do and don't like, but that's some of my preferences. Like I said, my main thing is I want the cover to effectively communicate what the book is gonna be like, and I just want it to be pretty to look at. I like a pretty cover. I'm superficial like that. What can I say? Sometimes I judge books by their covers. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me for this video. Definitely let me know what some of your favorite romance novel cover treatments have been in the last few years or maybe of all time. If there's one from back in the day you really thought was great, let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and follow on all of their social media platforms on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, all the things. Follow them and you can follow me at Books Like Woe on YouTube, Goodreads, Instagram, all of that. And yeah, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Bye!